considering that you are obviously you work for Kintiki, maybe we'll start with this is probably cliche as well, but I'm am gonna ask you what's your favorite like the, maybe not your favorite place you've ever been, but maybe a holiday destination that you went to and you were surprised by. Yeah, Charlie, I love a good question like that. Um, I think the well. <laughs> I've been lucky enough to be with Kentucky for a while and travel on many Kentucky, so I'm pretty spoil in choice. But I guess the most recent, the probably my fave one recently, is uh, on our new South Korea trip, South Korean Seoul in South Korea. Uh, seriously, one of my all-time favorite destinations in the world. Um, but I think part of that, which sounds really random, is on the trip you may get an opportunity to go to a baseball game and seriously koreans do baseball like no other it's it's just a massive dance high energy a lot of fun good food just a really good fun time i feel like most people don't even watch the baseball game but yeah it's definitely if you ever get a chance to do it highlight i would not have associated no. koreans and baseball <laughs> at all totally but it's probably a highlight. It's just so interesting. They have these cheerleaders. Everyone gets in unison, does dances and sing songs in between the breaks. It's so much fun. Have you ever been a Kentucky leader on a trip? No. Uh, it's, I have immense respect for them. I don't think I have the talent to do it. Like, they are incredible. Like, a few of my good friends are trip managers, but it's just the ability to, to keep everything in motion, know everything they do. I just I don't think I can multitask quite like them. Welcome to Ask Student Edge, where we're answering your questions about student life and life in general. Jay, thank you so much for coming onto this episode of Ask Student Edge. Can you please introduce yourself for our viewers? Totally. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Jay. I'm head of marketing for Kentucky here in Australia. Um, and yeah, one of those people who loves Kentucky and marketing. So it's a real good, uh, great honor to talk to you today just about all things Kentucky and travel. If you were a student or maybe when you were student age, did you, um, ever travel? Did you ever get to do anything, you know, like Kentucky or any other bits of traveling? I think for me, when I went to university, uh, which I'm going to pretend it wasn't that long ago, um, I I kind of went to university and just went straight from high school straight into university. I grew up in New Zealand, so I went to university in New Zealand. Um, so I didn't quite get to travel, but I think looking in hindsight, it's one of those things I wish I'd done. I did all my travel straight out of university. So um, it's one of those things I wish I had taken the time, even in between breaks, to try and go travel. Uh, more broadly than just within New Zealand at the time. So unfortunately I didn't, uh, but it's one of those things I wish I had done. I'm, I'm the same as you. So I don't know, I think I felt really scared to travel when I was in uni. I don't know why. I think my parents probably didn't help. Love you guys if you're listening to this. Um, but they're, they're quite, you know, protective. Like I come from an Asian family. So they're like, you can't, what do you mean? You want to go to Europe on your own? Like, so that didn't help, um, and it's so unfortunate because then I was always like, oh, when I finish uni, I'm going to take a year off and go travelling. Um, I finished uni in 2020, so that meant I didn't take a year off <laughs> and go travelling. Um, so, yeah, I'm the same. I never got to have, like, a big sort of, like, travel adventure when I was a student. Um, but I don't know about you, but I would definitely, for any students who are listening, I would say I wish I'd done it and I would suggest it. Do you have any sort of... Well, how do you feel about it? Totally. I think I'm the same. Look, I grew up in an Indian household, so I understand that whole, you know, there's an expectation that kind of sometimes sit within those realms as well. But I think in hindsight and also just seeing some of what my friends did is taking those opportunities and those breaks. I think there's a few reasons why I definitely would encourage one to do it is I think it definitely broadens out kind of where, like, understanding who you are and what you want to do. And I think especially when you're referencing 2020, I think we all kind of understood coming out of the C word exactly how important mental health and well-being is to us. And I think travel has a brilliant way of opening up your perspective and, and centering you and also just broadening out what you want to do. I think also during university, I, I knew what I wanted to do. I had a clear path, but I think it, having that moments of regrouping and break definitely would have helped shape some of the, the courses or the the things I would have taken and potentially have done some things slightly differently as well. And I think I probably wouldn't have been as stressed as I was trying to trying to nail every exam. I think one of those things I 
would have loved to have is something to look forward to of those moments, just regroup and break and spend some time forming those friendships and relationships and traveling around the world. I think one of the things that we've been discovering at Kentucky um, is that, you know, there's, there's definitely this feeling amongst Gen Zs of even coming out of high school, feeling that bit of pressure and, and kind of feeling lost and kind of understanding like, where do I go from here? Do I want to go to university straight away? Do I want to do something else? And I think it's a really crucial moment to kind of just take a step back. Not definitely not saying don't go to university or go do studying or anything else, but taking a moment to actually just figure out exactly what those kind of moments are. And I think, yeah, I think that's really important to try and take a moment and do. I don't know about, you know, when I was a student to now, but when I talk to students now, I think like the biggest barrier to entry, so to speak, when it comes to traveling is the cost. I think, you know, even for me, like I'm working full time and the cost to go traveling is really, is really difficult sometimes. Um, Do you have any advice, I guess, from your point of view at at working at Kentucky about how students can kind of continue studying if they, you know, if they are studying and still go on trips? Because, um, yeah, I'm sure Kentucky have a a few different options that they can take. Yeah, definitely. I think I'm packing that question a little bit. I think there is definitely, there's definitely uh, a range of trips you can do with Kentucky. I think, you know, coming back to who Kentucky is, I guess for anyone who doesn't know who Kentucky is, we are the OG youth travel brand. We take 18 to 35s exclusively around the world to over six continents across 200 trips. So we've been doing this while we have a wide breadth. And I think why I frame it like that is there is an opportunity to find your niche or your interest or your destination of choice that fits within your schedule. We have trips that range anything from three days right up to 45 plus days. So I think when you're looking for moments to fit within study breaks or semester breaks or trimester breaks, there's there's trips that can match up with those dates and fit within that as well, no matter where you want to go, whether that's Europe and seeing some of these Asian cultures or uh, South Korea or parts of Asia, I think there is there is the ability to find something that fits within that realm and something that matches your interests, whether you're more active based and want to go hiking or exploring in New Zealand or you want to just eat all the pasta you can in Italy. There's something me. that, yeah, 100% me too. I think you're going to find that anywhere. But I think the amazing thing about Kentucky is that you don't have to do this on your own. Um, you can either go with friends or meet new friends from around the world who are in that similar life stage that are searching for those things, have similar interest groups. Some of my best friends were met on Kentucky trips and you kind of form this really cool bond within the first few days. But I think, you know, it is travel doesn't necessarily feel like one of the most important things when you're trying to study, but it's definitely one of the, those things I would definitely prioritize. I think, you know, ask any of our past travelers um, about the value of Kentucky and they'll definitely tell you it's great value and all those things. But I think when we were looking at the numbers ourselves, because, you know, obviously cost of living, cause he lives is definitely a big thing at the moment. When we were crunching the numbers ourselves, we went and looked at it and, you know, a Kentucky trip can sometimes be over 20% cheaper than just trying to fit that all together yourself, um, which I think is really important to know. And part of the reason for that is we we include your accommodation, we include your transportation, some of your meals, all these experiences in this one handy little cost that, that makes it easy to understand. And there's payment plans and all sorts of things that can help you with that. Um, and then like that's a really important thing. It, it saves you money, but more than that, it also saves you the time and stress and trying to plan all that yourself. Like, I don't know if anyone's ever tried to plan a multi-day holiday across multiple cities, trying to match out how I'm going to get from point A and hotels and all those things. A ton of stress and a ton of time, which you just don't always have as a student, especially when you're trying to study and trying to just do normal life as well. So I think Kentucky definitely helps with that as well. I can relate to that. I'm currently trying, I mean, this is so like typical, every Aussie is doing this right now, but I'm currently trying to plan a Euro trip with my boyfriend for next year. And um, A, we have not stopped bickering um, about what we're doing, where we're going, where we want to stay. Um, And two, it's just so difficult. Like, I'm like, I actually don't want to think about what hostel I'm going to stay at or how I'm going to get from point A to point B. And like, we have actually just settled on that we're going to do a Kentucky because we don't want, like, we just don't want to do it ourselves. We're like tired. We want to avoid the argument. Um, And we just like, we just actually want someone to deal with this for us. And it's so nice to have it like readily available. I can just pick it out and 
go, essentially, which is how I feel about it. And I'm sure lots of students feel that way too. Totally. I think it's the most daunting. I mean, there's enough choices to make on a day-to-day basis. There's enough things to worry, to worry about and prioritise. I think the last thing you want to do is worry yourself about your travel. You, I think I personally just want to go and know it's taken care of and just actually be in the moment rather than having to stress about what's next and how do I do this or where do I go from there. So to your point, exactly. That's exactly um, why Contigui is great in those scenarios. Yeah, and something I found really interesting that you said before is um, when we think about student holidays and we think about going, you know, for a vacation as a student, we think about, oh, that mid-sem break or the end of year break, and that's the only, like, times we can really escape to go for, like, a little getaway. But I liked what you said about how um, Kintiki have different trips. So, like, there's the option to kind of go for a shorter amount of time or to go for, like, you know, maybe a bit longer but not too long. So it's not like we have to be away for six weeks if we don't want to. Is that correct? Yeah, totally. I think there there are a range of destinations, a range of trips that range anything from a sub-week to multiple weeks, depending on where that fits in. So it's definitely correct. And I think it is important. I think, you know, even semester breaks and end of year breaks, there are scenarios where some of us just have to work and just get through that. So trying to find the spaces and moments or the gaps that are most relevant to you there is a trip that will fit within that. And I think that's really important to know. Um, but also I think it's a, it's a cool one to fit in between things rather than just a semester break to be able to refresh mid semester or somewhere around like these other breaks that you have a bit of time to kind of regroup and learn something different uh, or like learn differently from what you have been doing in university and courses and stuff. And I think, you know, kind of that insight for us is we've kind of running uh, a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek campaign at the moment uh, led by Bryn, who plays uh, Spider in Heartbreak High, called Kentucky University. And so it's this, this notion that you can learn outside of the classroom all around the world and campuses all around the world. And I think part of that is we're hearing eight courses, aka trips, and kind of get this notion of being able to learn and do things differently um, in those moments, in those gaps. So it doesn't have to be one or the other. Uh, it, it can, you can have both. Yeah, I have seen that. And I was like, oh my gosh, if I was in uni, I'd drop out now to do Kentucky. I guess for students who maybe have never traveled before and they've never really planned their own trip and stuff, I guess, do you have any sort of, not budgeting tips, but maybe things that they need to keep in mind when it comes to saving or you know working towards a trip that they want to do like what are some things that should be maybe front of mind for them yeah i think it's it's establishing kind of where you want to go and what you want to do first i think you know or it doesn't even have to be the destination it could be the type of travel you want to do if you want to be more active based or more more relaxed based you know if you want to go sailing versus snowboarding it's it's kind of figuring out where that what you want to do and where that fits in your schedule. And I think it's a really easy one to jump on Kentucky's website and go through that and find something that matches all of those. And so kind of once you've got your baseline of what you want to do, then you kind of figure out, okay, that's the necessary budget I have for that. You can utilize some of these other payment methods that we have, like like um, zip money and those kind of things. We have our own payment plans. And just kind of budgeting through that. I think the the great thing with us is that we kind of give you a stare of what your trip's going to cost. The additions of being just some of your meals and some other additional experiences or any souvenirs or shopping you want to do while you're away. Um, but we can help you with your trips and your flights. So it kind of makes that budgeting and understanding the money side of that really easy as well. And then it's just, I think, like any of us, is trying to figure out how much money we can set aside to work towards that. And I think it's just attainable goals that, if you are working towards something, you find a way of doing that. And maybe that's giving up coffee like I did for a while to uh, save for my trip. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have to be... That's a hard, that's a hard thing to I do. I know. I'm was, impressed. I was not fun to be around for a little bit of time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think one of the interesting things, like a, a mentor told me years ago, is we have also this notion sometimes to just take one big holiday and just get it done with at the end of the year or in between moments. But I think coming back to that earlier point is finding the ability to take small and often trips where you can. I mean, not everyone can do small and often. That's a really privileged thing to say. But finding moments where you can take that trip and scheduling that in and going away can be just 
moments or shorter bursts rather than this massive long trip, but it also can make it way more achievable um, when budgeting as well. Well, actually, now I'm intrigued to understand which Kentucky trip you're you're wanting to do. Oh, well, we haven't gotten that far yet because my boyfriend and I have very different ideas as to where we'd like to go in Europe. Like, I mean, I thought it'd be quite simple. I don't know why we're not on the same page. I don't don't think I'm asking for too much. Um, But I think I want to do a bit more Western Europe. So I want to kind of do like your Italy, your France, your your Portugal's, your UK um, and whatnot. Um, like I want to be in hot weather, like near a beach, like, you know, this sounds so cringe, but I want my nice Instagram photos, you know, I want people to know that I've gone to Europe. Whereas he's like, I want to go to like Germany and like see all this history. And he's like, and like, he wants to do more like Eastern Europe. And I'm like, oh, this is like, aren't we going to kill each other? (laughs) You know, you don't have to do one or the other. You could do both. Well... That that's the thing with when you're a student and when you're on uni break, you have all this time. I haven't actually had that. Com- this is probably a bit awkward that I'm doing this for a work interview, but <laughs> I haven't had that conversation with my boss yet. Of I want to take this amount of time to go to Europe, and I know neither has he. So it's more like we're trying to like. Yeah, I don't. I mean, we, I mean, I know there's an element of um sacrifice, but um we we haven't reached that point of the discussions yet. We've sort of solidified the countries we definitely want to do. Yeah, nice. Um, and then we're going to work from there. Cool. Well, then, if you need help with that, we can take this offline and we can talk through it. Yes. yes, please do. Well, actually, I was going to um, say as well, I liked what you said about the small, like the small little trips, because I, one of like someone that works at Student Edge, um, we call him Mr. Worldwide because like every other weekend or like public holiday, he's like, oh, I'm not going to be here, I'm going for like five days to Japan or I'm going for a few days to Korea or I'm going, you know, to Melbourne for 48 hours and we're like, oh my gosh, like, we're so startled but I was like, do you know what, I'm going to do that in 2024. Like, I want to be on a plane every three months if I can. Um, so I actually have tried to do that this year and I have to say it's really nice. It's actually less exhausting than a big holiday and it's just like there's always something to look forward to as well totally i mean big holidays definitely have their parts i i I did Mm -hmm. mine last year to spend three weeks in europe um and so i think they definitely have their moments and i think for me personally anyway being able to unwind and relax and then then get into the adventure side and go see places and then manage to get back to portugal and these places i absolutely love but yeah i think there's also something cool i think you know it doesn't have to be it doesn't you don't have to wait for a moment you can find any reason to fill that gap like and i think travel is the best way of filling that gap with and i think being able to find those moments and and yeah, i love the idea of being that person as well um but yeah just trying to find these cool places that add to your life and these experiences and i know for me um when i travel i love meeting new people and like that's something that i really enjoy but i know that not everyone's an extrovert like i am Um, how would you say like introverts maybe who are like wanting to travel but they're not really sure about meeting new people they're not um, you know overly extroverted and they're not really like comfortable sometimes being around big groups of people have you got any suggestions for them who might struggle with that yeah totally I think Kentucky is a really good balance for that as well I think you you can be in a, as evolved as you want with a wider group, but also understand you need to take those moments for yourself and recharge or, you know, people get energy from different ways, whether it's being by themselves or being with other people. And I think Kentucky is this really good mix of finding people from all walks of life, from all over the world that have that range and spectrum. And I think that's one of those things with your trip managers as well on trip. They're really big experts in facilitating how, how those dynamics work and being able to integrate people depending on where they're at in their journey. You know, the amount of introverts that I've met over the years who've gone on trips, they absolutely love it because it, it gives them the ability to to discover a little bit more about themselves and their energy levels and places they never thought. I think there's something cool about putting yourself out there and not not necessarily uncomfortable spaces all the time, but in different spaces. And I think that's part of the beauty of travel is it sounds so old and cliched about finding yourself when you're traveling the whole eat, pray, love scenario, but it's actually really true. I think being able to, to find 
who you are in these moments and connecting with people who are at similar life stages or similar interest levels from all around the world definitely helps with that as well. And I think, you know, if you're worried about whether you like the people on your trip or you're, or whether you're too introverted for a trip, I, I don't think you need to worry about that. I, I, we, I have never really heard of people not engaging kind of like that way. I think you'll find your tribe no matter where you go. And that's the beauty of Kentucky is bringing all these people together that you can find your tribe no matter what trip you take. I'm going to challenge you a little bit now. Love it. So feel free to take your time with this one. Um, but I'm going to give you a person, a hypothetical person, and I want you to tell me what Kentucky trip that they should take. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So Jane is a final year university student studying physio physio um so she's going to be a physio one day um she wants to do one final trip on her last mid-semester uni break she doesn't care where in the world you want to send her but uh she's a good mix so she is um likes the outdoors likes doing outdoorsy things but also doesn't mind some of the quieter moments when it comes to traveling um and yeah where would you send her? She's got six weeks, so you can send her on the biggest or smallest trip. You know, look, if you've got a larger break and you've never been to Europe before and you want a bit of uh, bit of active and a bit of culture and a bit of food, Europe is probably the greatest destination to cover all of that as well. So there is trips like European Trail, which is 23 days across 12 countries. It gives you the ability to be in those countries for a while and experience them and discover them and discover good food, and architecture and history and learn about cultures and spaces um, and covering a range of destinations. It's hard to narrow down just one trip. But I think if I was Jane and wanted to do it all in one go, uh, we have our Grand European trip long European trip in there, get it all done, meet some people, create these really cool lifelong locations, get taken around all these various locations and places, and it's a really good mix of active. All right, my last question for you, Jay. Where is your next trip going to be? Ah, such a tough question. Um, Funnily enough, I think I was actually talking to a friend about this the other day. Uh, it's It sounds like I'm just plugging another Kentucky trip. I'm not. I genuinely want to go here. We just launched uh, in the last few months a Philippines trip, and mm-hmm. Philippines has been on my bucket list for ages. And um, uh, the uh, director who created the trip is a good friend of mine. Um, just smashed it out of the park and so the guys who've just recently done the trip like did all the shoots and the photos just came back and raved about it like there's just something cool about all these little islands and these experiences and the beach and the sun and it's a good mixture of active and outdoors and beach so yeah it's probably next on my list is the Philippines thanks for watching this episode if you liked it like and subscribe to both Kentucky and Student Edge